My name is Christoph Stückerberger. I'm a professor of ethics in Switzerland and in various universities in Africa, Asia and Russia. And I'm president and founder of GlobeEthics.net, the global network on ethics. I'm talking about leadership and especially church leadership. There are around the world religious leaders and church leaders which are very credible, integer, engaged, founded in their faith with a profound integrity. But there are also other leaders, church leaders, who lack this integrity, who are corrupt, who mismanage, who abuse their power. And that leads to many Christians who then doubt about their faith if they see their leader not behaving as what they expect from a credible faith-based leader. What is then the characteristics of good leadership and responsible leadership? Let me mention three simple facts of Christian faith. The first is God is not a human being. God is God and human beings are human beings. God is a creator and human beings are creation. This fundamental difference makes already clear that no human being is perfect and can be perfect. That is the second key statement of Christian faith. We all human beings are sinners. We are imperfect. That's our fate and our chance. We must not be perfect and we cannot be perfect. And that means we all can fail in the use of power. We are tempted to abuse of power as, Christ, as Jesus was tempted in the first phase of his life when he, before he went public. He was tempted very seriously three times by the evil who wanted to tempt and test his greed for power his greed for doing wonders, and he could resist. But we as human beings need each other to correct each other because we are sinners, because we are not perfect. That means that every power needs a control, a monitoring by a superior. Even the president of a country needs the control by the parliament. A judge needs the control of other judges. A pastor needs the control of the people of his parish. A bishop, a church leader, needs the control of a synod or of a, of a, of a church council. And that makes us human and makes us reliable and makes us responsible if you accept that we, in each leadership position, needs to be controlled by others, other human beings. As Paul in the New Testament said, be a support for each other. If one fails, tell him or her and help to come out of this situation. And that leads me to the third fundamental observation of Christian faith. That is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's spirit who one, well, God wants to come close to us. And this is the big blessing and promise of God. Now, who has the Holy Spirit? Some church leaders or religious leaders claim that they are those who are blessed by God's Spirit. But if they claim to be the only one to know the truth, they would put God in a prison, and they would be even above God. But God is free in His will to whom to give His Spirit. God's Spirit in the Bible was often in the weak and not in the leaders. Mary, this young lady, was chosen to bear God's Spirit and even God's own Son. And we could tell a lot of biblical stories where God has chosen those 
we as human beings would never choose as leaders and as credible persons to execute God's will. That means Christian leaders become modest. We pray that we get God's blessing and God's spirit, but God is free to give it to whoever he decides to give. And that again, these three things, God is God, human beings are sinners, and God is free to give his spirit to whoever he wants. These three facts together are the theological basis of Christian faith for responsible leadership. What does that mean? That means, dear friends, brothers and sisters, this means that each church leader, each person with responsibilities in a religious organization and especially in the Christian churches is called to be a servant leader, is called to be a steward of God's resources. We are not the owner of the world, nor of the assets of our church, nor of the people as parish members. We are called to serve God for His glory. And we are called to be modest, to be controlled by other human beings. As a professor of ethics, many people think, yeah, this must be a perfect person. As a pastor, people look at me and think, yeah, he's certainly a good person. But also myself, I can be tempted to do wrong. I take an example. I created Globe Ethics Net as a global foundation on ethics. I was its president for four years, and then I have seen that I should step in as director. When I was the operational director, I, the Swiss law accepted that we could have, a, uh, that I could be the president and the director at the same time. So I would have almost absolute power in executing and promoting this foundation. But I said, that's wrong. Also myself, I need to be controlled. I need to have a security net in case I would fail. So I asked a famous Swiss ambassador to become my president, to control me in case I would be tempted to abuse my power. So that's why we should be proud to have councils commissions, auditors who control us. That's not a mistrust on the contrary. It confirms that we are able to execute our power in a responsible way as God's stewards. A key issue is also the succession. I see in many countries and we see on political levels presidents who change constitutions in order to extend their mandate for from a third to a, to a second to a third term. We see the same in church leaders, leadership. Succession is a key issue of responsible leadership. When we start a calling to lead as to, to be called as church leaders, <clears throat> we should from the very beginning also think of our departure. Departing from a position is as important as starting a position. Because if we are not able to, part, to, to, to go away, to leave and hand over to next leaders, we are not able to trust God and to trust other human beings. That's why I myself, in this foundation, for example, I decided to respect the Swiss law where we normally are retiring with 65 years. I could have been by law, but longer the executive director of this organization. But I said, an organization is not my private property, even if I found this foundation. 
It is an instrument of God to serve humanity and to serve his gospel and to serve to God's glory. So I decided to step down and find a successor. And our Board of Foundation had a search committee and a process, I, and I am happy that we found a very excellent successor, Obiora Ike from Nigeria, a professor of ethics, uh, who, who now continues to lead. I continue to serve now as president again, but no more as director. So let us try to have leadership and succession in a responsible, reliable, planned way so that people can trust that we are not abusing our power, we are not sitting on our seats of a power uh, forever, but we trust God that he will lead our organizations and institutions in the best possible way. I think we have a lot of leadership challenges in our churches. Let's try to be faithful to God. Let's try to avoid abuse of power. Let's do whatever we can to be controlled by our fellows, by sisters and brothers who show us where we fail and should be corrected. Let us recognize that all what is given to us and trusted to us, the people we serve, the assets we have in our organizations are not our property. They are entrusted to us by God to serve as his stewards for his glory. Thank you very much for your attention.